How's it going guys? Um, in this kind of tutorial here, I wanted to go over something that's be becoming more predominant uh, in web technology and in uh, web development, which is the idea of proxy servers. Um, I'm going to go over just what a regular proxy server is and what a reverse proxy server is. Um, so basically, I made a couple charts here. So this here is um, kind of how I picture in my mind um, the uh, data flow, the traffic flow uh, for a setup that does feature a proxy server. So what a proxy server is, is typically it's a device that traffic gets routed through. Um, it could be a virtual device, but could also be a, a physical device. Um, and the idea is um, network traffic goes through that device. Um, and it can serve different purposes. You know, it could act as a, a censoring thing. It can act as a uh, anonymizer. Um, it could perform a service. Um, it could, uh, you know, maybe... Um, analyze for uh, suspicious behavior or, or, or a whole host of different things. So in this diagram here, we have uh, what I call here the local device or the client or the user. Those are pretty interchangeable terms. So that could be like a mobile phone or a laptop or a desktop or um, a kiosk of some sort. Anything that's trying to access the internet that's being used by uh, an end user. Um, and then what stands in front of that is the proxy server. And what that means is traffic issued by that local device or that client or that user is going to first hit what we call the local proxy. And the local proxy is going to do whatever it was set up to do and then it's going to proxy that traffic to the public internet. And then, you know, that's kind of a vague term, the cloud, um, but what goes on there is, you know, a whole host of different things, um, but we won't concern ourselves with that. Um, but the relevant idea here is a proxy is an endpoint, a traffic endpoint that sits in front of the local client. Um, so some, some common uh, proxies um, might be something like Fiddler is a local proxy tool. Uh, Charles proxy is a local proxy tool. Um, I believe uh, torrent, um, whatever whatever that uses as a proxy tool. Um, uh, instances where you've probably encountered proxies are like if you go to a library and use their computers, well, they probably have some service. Um, in front of the computer that kind of monitors uh, the web traffic activity. Maybe it stops you from going to, um, you know, like uh, adult websites or something like that. You know, schools usually have a proxy service that does some sort of censoring um, or just monitoring traffic, that sort of thing. Um, you know, corporate networks probably have a proxy just to kind of keep tabs on on the traffic and. Um, and that sort of thing and um, and also sometimes you want to set up a proxy just so you can see your own traffic you know something like Wireshark um, will allow you to see you know the the, the packets being sent and um, sometimes you want to analyze that traffic you know I'm on my laptop right now but I don't know right now what um, what uh, apps and and stuff that I have running right now that are making network network requests to some web server on the internet. And you know, that's usually going on under the hood. And if I set up a uh, a local proxy with and I proxy all my traffic on my computer to that proxy, I could now get access and see those requests being made and see what origin they're hitting and actually look at the content if I set it up correctly. And you know what I'd probably see I'd probably see uh, intermittent requests to Dropbox. Uh, may, right now, I'd be seeing requests to, uh, from Google Chrome to websites. 
Um, I'd be seeing requests from, you know, maybe Apple to get updates and things like that, and it would make that all visible to me. So proxies serve, you know, a bunch of different, um, you can do all sorts of different things with proxies, um, but that's, that's usually uh, the use case for a typical proxy server. Um, now what's becoming more predominant um, is the idea of a reverse proxy server. And I have a diagram of that here. So the way a reverse proxy works is you have the local client, it makes a request to the internet, you know, for example.com. And example.com, the way DNS is going to work, is going to, instead of shooting the user to the origin web server based on that IP address that's actually hosting the content or actually hosting the service, we're going to see name to another device first. And that device is going to be, um, is, going, is, is what we call a reverse proxy device. So we make a request for www.example.com and that www.example.com with the domain registrar is set up to CNAME traffic to instead of the origin to the proxy server and then the proxy server is going to um, proxy that traffic to the origin web server and what that lets us do is when the traffic does hit the reverse proxy server it can do something um, and usually it introduces a service or um, you know reduces overhead or, or something. Um, I'm trying to think. I think, um, so there are um, a litany of services that utilize reverse proxies, but one of the predominant ones is content delivery networks. So a content delivery network, their whole service is they make sure that when you request www.example.com and, and you're origin request is, is coming from um, Boston, you shouldn't be uh, hitting a data center in China. You should be hitting a data center in the northeast of the United States. So that's what content delivery networks do. They, they make sure that geographically we're being as efficient as possible because those requests will take longer. So, uh, so you know, a CDN such as Akamai, um, I think they function as a reverse proxy, so the, um, the domain will, will, will see name to Akamai, and then Akamai uses its magic sauce to determine which data center to hit based on the GOIP of the client. Um, so that's, that's one service that, reverse, that use, utilizes a reverse proxy. Um, there's other ones. Uh, again, you could do content like censorship. Um, you could use a reverse proxy to maybe mitigate uh, uh, DDoS attacks. Um, you could use a reverse proxy to, uh, to load balance. That's a common one. Um, and that's similar to the CDN idea. It's to be efficient with resources to, to, um, to determine where to proxy uh, the request to, like what data center, if it's a, a high-volume high website. Um, you can also, technically, you could use a reverse proxy to, um, to uh, make changes to content. Um, you can use a reverse proxy to uh, apply um, arbitrary logic. You know, if, if instead of the... It, you could use a reverse proxy to serve up different content based on the local device. So, for instance, if we determine a real user is requesting a website, maybe we proxy to the origin web servers. But if we determine that the request is coming from a bot or a crawler, maybe we terminate the request. Maybe we proxy the request to a, a more easily digestible form of the site. That's, that's a common thing that people do now uh, for SEO benefits, um, is, is instead of returning the single page app, the JavaScript heavy site, we can return an HTML site um, so that the site becomes indexed with like Google and things like that. Um, you know, maybe we make changes to the content. Maybe we do some logging stuff where we send um, data to like Kibana or Elasticsearch or something like that. Um, but it is sometimes useful to have uh, a device sitting in front of the origin web server. Um, 
Nginx does a really good job with uh, proxying traffic and acting as a reverse proxy. Um, Node.js can do similar things. And honestly, you could do it with any web server. Um, but that is the idea of the reverse proxy. So where it differs, the proxy sits in front of the local client as the request goes out to the internet. A reverse proxy sits in front of the origin web server. Um, and um, so it's, it's in a different spot in the traffic flow. Um, and these arrows are, are unidirectional, but really these are bidirectional. So um, we make a request to the origin web server, it's going to come back through the reverse proxy, back through some global DNS, and then back to the client. Um, and I think that is all I have on this. Um, but, uh, but again, the reverse proxy idea is becoming more and more popular as positioned as a service, um, services that utilize this proxy idea um, for you know, all sorts of optimizations and, and content uh, analysis and all that sort of thing. So if you hear these terms, hopefully you'll have a better idea of what they mean. And again, this is a gross simplification. Um, you know, typically before, you know, I, I, this, this idea of the public internet as the cloud, well, there's tons of stuff going on here in terms of DNS, in terms, in terms of, uh, you know, CDNs, uh, content delivery networks, you know, other devices such as load balancers that usually sit in front of uh, highly trafficked websites. So usually a request from a client to an end origin you know, could hop through several layers of devices. Um, that's not uncommon. But um, this is a, a simplified um, view here. And I hope this is useful for you guys. And uh, thank you.